Megan Hicks of I Run Far, and I'm with Jared Hazen. He's the second place finisher at the 2018 Lake Sonoma 50 Mile. Hey, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. You had a great race. We were just talking. It's been a while since I've seen you. Maybe the finish line of Western States a couple years ago. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, I mean, that's getting on three years now, so lots, lots changed. I did catch a glimpse of you here last year, but this mm -hmm. race didn't go so well for you last year. It was amidst a year of injury, is that right? Yeah, so kind of came into the race with just a little bit of pain, kind of my right groin, and that combined with just kind of a messy race and, and nutrition fails and stuff <laughs> um, led me to DNF, and, and I've, I don't like to DNF, but that one I was just, I was okay with. I mean, I was... I was in pain and, and was compensating and stuff and found out um, it went kind of misdiagnosed for a month or two but found out it ended up being a stress reaction in my femoral neck which is not a good place to get one not a good place yeah yeah so that took me out for the summer you know six weeks off build back up supposed to build back up slowly um, <laughs> How, what did you do <laughs> yeah. yeah so I, I managed to stay healthy for maybe 10 weeks Okay. Um, started at like zero miles, got up to 150, and then uh, had a pain in my back and found out oh, that really? that was a, a sacral stress fracture. Another uh, not good spot. Yeah. Yeah. So that one required crutches, um, mm. eight weeks off, and that one taught me my lesson. Okay. <laughs> so when was just, the eight weeks off mark? When, like, when? I started probably right around Thanksgiving so okay. maybe like, like very end of November beginning of December okay um, and took my time coming back you know built built up things slowly and that was maybe one of the, my proudest accomplishments in running <laughs> actually <laughs> following like I don't know the 10% rule or 15% yeah. yeah. rule or something yeah I think my proudest like, accomplishment. I think it was I mean I've never I've never done that I've always had like big jumps and stuff and it's never been a problem but two pro big problems last year um, I took my time so well it's been a couple years since we've interviewed you and um, you've sort of jumped all over the place geographically a little bit but I yep. think you've settled in Flagstaff now? Yep so I moved there last May as I had finished up my freshman year of college back in Pennsylvania okay. um, so I jumped from Colorado Springs which I was there for a few years back to Pennsylvania for my first year of school and decided that that just wasn't really the best place for me to be Okay. and decided to, to try Flagstaff and uh it's been great. <laughs> You're still in school there? Yep, so just transferred transferred to school there. Majoring in microbiology? Yeah, pretty exciting Maybe stuff. Maybe my favorite biology class in undergrad. It was micro? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. actually haven't taken microbiology yet, so. Really? Yeah. Amazing. I'm taking just general bio. Awesome. Right. Um, so, yeah, what, what year in school are you officially now, like credit-wise? So I'm finishing up my sophomore year. Okay. Got a few weeks left in the semester. Um, I'd taken three years off after high school and okay. then started. And are you going to school full-time, part-time? Yep, full-time. So just doing that and, and running and that's it. Yeah, and that's all. Yeah. That's probably enough. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Funny. Okay, so you've been healthy since end of November, beginning of December, mm -hmm. you had a good ramp up in training. Yep. Talk about what that actually looked like for you because you guys got quite a training group there in Flagstaff and you're also training at altitude. So yeah. yeah, can you just sort of explain what your season has looked like so far? Yeah, so I guess the first probably 10 weeks, probably like all of December and all of January and then the first half of February was just building up to kind of a place that I feel like I'm really starting to train again and that's okay. I go just by numbers and it's about 100 miles a week and so got up to 100 miles a week towards the end of February um, or maybe maybe it was a little earlier than that but put in just four solid weeks nothing special race way too cool mm. and at the I beginning of March good. yeah and yeah. just kind of trained through it um just wanted to race you know it had been so long so <laughs> when i remember how to do this <laughs> yeah 
So a road, road trip brought Jim with me. What a good time. Finished second, <laughs> about 30 seconds behind Max. Um, and I felt like it was really encouraging that things were going well. Like, yeah. Was, ran the second half where all the hills are really strong, was, you know, moving through the field. So, um, yeah, things were things were looking good from there. And I had time for another, like, really good four weeks um, before it was time to taper for this. And did you come into Lake Sonoma wanting to, um, yeah, sort of, like, have some revenge on last year? Or were you here for a golden ticket? Or, yeah, what was the, the motivation to be here today? I, I guess the primary objective was to get the golden ticket. You want to go back to States for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's probably my favorite race out there. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's a... Uh, I think it suits me well, and I mean the history of it. It's, it's just a special race, mm -hmm. you know. That I think people that have been there understand. Um, but yeah, so I want to get the ticket, and then I mean training has just been going really well. I was doing things that I had never been able to do before okay. in training, or you know, and you mean paces it was and, yeah paces okay. and just runs at altitude, and you know the the quantity that I was getting in was like solid um and so I thought I wanted to put up like if I wanted to see if I could run a fast time as well um and I didn't really run quite as fast as maybe I thought I could okay. and maybe I do think I left at least today probably you know three to five minutes out there just um <laughs> I I kind of like Jim was way off in front. Mario was not all that close, really. By the time we had like 12 miles to go, you're kind of just wandering around. No yeah. Land. So and I and yeah, I was I was hurt and I didn't exactly crush the last 12. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about how the race went. Um, it seemed like pretty early, like the the men at the very front of the field spread out, and you like the three of you were just by yourself. Yeah, I think I kind of expected that. I knew Jim was going to be uh, in the front. I thought if things were feeling really good, like if I felt comfortable with it, I'll run with Jim, you know. Um, I didn't necessarily know he was going to go that quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then Mario was with us, and I figured, I mean, we, I mean, I trained with Jim a lot and stuff, but I know nothing about Mario uh, other than I, I see, you know, some of his runs on Strava. And I knew he was in like, good shape. He's raced well earlier this year. Yeah. So we had kind of separated ourselves, let Jim go because I quickly found out that it was not going to be in my best interest to run with him. <laughs> You're looking for a golden ticket, maybe not yeah. the way to do it. So it was me and Mario and maybe like the first four miles we ran together and then I just managed to get a little bit of a gap. Okay. Like by the time we got to mile 12, it was maybe, a, or like the first aid station warm springs, it was like maybe a minute. Um, and then from there, it just like, it was big enough that I couldn't see him, you know, on this course, it's so windy and mm -hmm. stuff that you can get out of sight pretty quick. Yeah. And um, I was happy, like, I wanted to run by myself at that point. Um, Let me suffer alone. Yeah, okay. I do. I mean, I do a lot of my training by myself. I like to get in my own rhythm. And so, yeah, I guess I probably had maybe through halfway, I was right around two to three minutes in front of him. And then... I ran the second half pretty well um, to increase that to maybe seven or so minutes at the yeah, finish. Yeah. So. Um, so I got to see you at mile 38 on the inbound where you go around the far <laughs> edge of the lake yeah. and, and start making, I don't know, like kind of ends up being a fairly burly final 12 miles, I think. Yeah, it's a tough last 12. Mm. You uh, kind of just had your head down. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Pretty non-interactive. You, you asked me, how do you feel? Or maybe you didn't ask me, but I thought that this is what you asked me. And I just kind of like looked up and had the most pathetic, good, and <laughs> kept running. But you were moving well. I was, yeah, I was moving well, but feeling it and hurting. And I think every time I would go into like aid stations and crew and stuff, like they would be like, I was just, yeah, real quiet, head down, like, giving my stuff, and let's go, like, but that's just, that's just how, like, I do, like, this is how I do things in training so much, it's just, like, I, I like to, I mean, I like to get, like, 
20 miles into a 50 mile race and just kind of grind away and know mm. that like I'm moving well like this is like these are tough miles and I'm getting through them really good and so I just kind of get my own little headspace. So I mean you're a pretty young guy yeah. but you already know how to suffer <laughs> quite well. Where, where does this come from? Where have you acquired this? I think it came from, I got into ultras really young. I probably ran my first ultra when I was 17. Okay. And then I was just pretty naive. Like I didn't really know like <laughs> what to do for training and like how to race and stuff. But I trained really, like I put in really big miles when I was younger mm. and, um, and went to big races like Western States and stuff. And so now it's just like, like I've experienced a lot, like, yeah. The training and stuff it's like I, I don't really put in the volume I used to and now I'm stronger being older and so I do feel like really good like I feel like yeah, an experienced ultra runner I feel like yeah. I generally kind of know like what I'm doing out there mm -hmm. so well congratulations on your second place finish yeah and thanks. your golden ticket yeah well, uh, see you in squaw yeah hashtag see you in squaw yeah <laughs>